Okay, so tonight we're going to do a video. I guess we should say first that uh, this is going to be Shango 66's next video. Um, I guess he can't do YouTube anymore, but I still can, and we'll see if I still can after this video. Uh, last weekend at the Ham Fest, we picked up a few more transistor radios, hopefully all PNP germanium, to continue testing those Russian transistors on. This is a Zenith Transoceanic 3000 model with the FM that supposedly works, hasn't been tested. Um, a Magnavox AM pocket radio that, uh, well, it, it uh, has a local oscillator working and that's about it, no audio. And a Lloyd's AM with barely any audio at all. And so uh, we could just do these like uh, all the hip hop groups do their albums. We'll just do it with, you know, so and so featuring so and so. You know, we got to have all those FTs all over the albums now. That's how they make it uh, appealing to a broader audience. Collaborative. Collaborative. And like, so we've got the backs off of the transistor radios. Uh, here's the Magnavox. Not much uh, access, access it's there. It's in pretty good shape. And here's the Lloyds. Yeah, so I'm I'm working on getting the account back, but who knows? That takes three to four weeks. Um, and the Xena 3000, which supposedly works. We're going to put some power on it and find out. Yeah, this is pretty crusty. Yeah, a lot of corrosion on the outside of the case. What would they do? Keep this thing in the ocean or something? Where are the heat sinks? Maybe There's supposed to be heat sinks on the. Uh, in a basement in Boston or something. Yeah, there's heat sinks on the audio yeah, transistors. Yeah, there's supposed to be heat sinks on the audio output transistors. Let's see. These transistors do go bad in here. That's why we're looking at the, the Russian alternative, which I pretty much got that figured out, but I kind of want. Uh, want to do the video right and have the distribution right when I do it because it's going to be a pretty in-depth video on substituting you know a, a, a later later manufactured transistor so this looks like uh, the oscillator coil first IF second IF and then that should be the detector diode right there, that little white thing. And then we have our audio stage, probably a bad transistor or two, and maybe a bad capacitor. Let's fire this one up first. So I'll let you fire it up and play with it. We have it connected to 12 volts. So that would be this. We're on FM. Speaker sounds bad. Yeah, the speaker's bad. Just as you and I sometimes go turn in and, and fall asleep troubled, so he's he's troubled in the darkness. And God said to Abram, no for certain. No, get off. Not even the Spanish stuff, man. To the Michael AM. Jackson is a death sentence. <laughs> now, you would talk about copyright. That guy so here's is... your your long wave below the AM band and your AM band. Choice. You're not saving any money in priorities. That's 1070, I think. And I remember. No. no. I am it. A concept. Oh. 10.70, I'll have the digital. There you go. Go back up. That's there it is. Lawyers at 1-800. It's pretty good, I imagine. And who wants to go in and get a little work? I imagine it'll be a little better once we're done uh, working on it. Maybe it could be a little more sensitive. Try and get AJ. Is that in here, 4.8? No, I'm not 
hearing anything down there. Come on, man, go slower. Go in forces. Well, how's your business with this? It's Gene Scott. Try and find WWV and then go up from there. And you're giving it too much credit. Go like 10 megahertz off. Go down. Oh, you want to go low? Mm -mm. Okay, let's do this. Signal generator. Signal generator. We'll set this to five megahertz. Let's see. Okay, so that's five point five megahertz. Oh, where it's close. right on. Okay, so we'll go down to forty-eight forty, which is. Boy. All right, so that one works. We don't really know which way is up and down. Yeah, I think that, that way, one. and then move the tuner. Nothing. It's got to be right up to your ear. Yeah, we're drawing 7.68 milliamps, which is about right. Somewhere between 5 milliamps and 10 milliamps is all, you know, about right for a 9 volt battery radio. So this could very possibly be bad caps or bad transistor. Where's the mic on the phone? Oh, uh, down here. So that's maximum volume. Barely audible. Yeah. Almost sounds like the speaker is just frozen solid. Because it's driving the amp up so hard that the amp is distorting, clipping. Yeah, we looked at the current draw, it's still only about 8 milliamps, so we don't think that the speaker is stuck. Yeah, if it was driving the full-on audio, it would be up at 50 milliamps. So the Magnavox is hooked up, it's drawing about 9, nine milliamp. Yeah, so this one's a couple milliamps higher than the the other one. For a demonstration, we should stick one of the Russian radios on there. They're pretty efficient. Pause that. You know, and it's never it's never a bad idea for the in for the users or the viewers rather to complain to YouTube that something that they valued is gone from um, 
you know, YouTube, that's what YouTube is going to respond to. They're going to respond to customer complaints uh, more than, you know, creator, a, a creator's complaints. So here we go. This is a Russian radio, so we'll turn it on. So 5.7 milliamps. It's long been thought that the Tibetans acquired the genes for high altitude tolerance through thousands of years of evolution. Now an international team of scientists led by the University of California, Berkeley, has shown that Tibetans actually acquired the gene when their ancestors mated with an extinct human cousin, the Denisovans. Study leader Rasmus Neal. Say so our max, well, I have it hooked up backwards, but the maximum milliamp draws, you know, 56 milliamps with it volume wide open. So that's a good benchmark. Oh. Okay, so. At some point we think we'd get some... I found that there's a little pop when you first turn it on. Yeah, there the is. Speaker. There is. And I was able to find a local oscillator, not with another radio, but with my oscilloscope, just going against the traces there. So the LO is running, but that's it. That's as far as I got with it. Boy, the audio section just seems dead. I mean, usually you get some buzzing. There's just nothing. Ah, crackle. Crackle from the pot. Let's take the board off and look at it. So we've got the board out. This has got some interesting package transistors in it. These germaniums that have the the tall germaniums that have the lip on the top. So again, the oscillator coils red. First IF transistor here, second IF transistor here. This should be the detector diode right there. These things are all the same. I mean, once you've seen one of them, they're all the same. They, they either had one or two IFs. The high-end stuff had three. And we have one electrolytic there. That's about the only one I see. Do you see any more? Yeah, that, by the volume knob. That couple of them too then. But where are the little tiny coupling capacitors? Why is there so much flex in that? Is the circuit board cracked? I hope not. See what I mean? Uh -huh. No, you don't have well. Two SA one sixty. Yeah, let's look at the. We'll, we'll look at the detector on the scope. I'll look at the detector diode. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see, see if, if there's audio or you know the oscillator is there. No, hold on. Well. Okay, we got something there. That's really odd looking, but let's tune. Where's the dial? How do we tune? Yeah, let's turn it. Oh! Touching the dial brings it back. Huh. Something going on with the tuning capacitor? Might be. No station still, huh? You said the oscillator was running? Thought so. 
I saw so a let's big nail. sign wave on it. Let's Have a look around the... Let's uh, nail this sucker with the signal generator. We'll lay this on top. Nail it with... Four fifty five and see if we get anything through it. A little bit. That's that's a lot of power though, that's like three watts. Yeah, the IF is getting through it, but nothing. Pause that for a second. Sure sounds like it wakes up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So we determined two of the four electrolytics are bad. Really bad. Really bad. But bridging them doesn't do anything, of course. The screws were missing out of this thing. And look at this. That looks like it grounds to right there okay. through the screw. Okay. Um, and I didn't take those screws out. So let's play with that for a second. So a screw was replaced in the bottom. No, but that didn't fix it. It's still me touching it and yeah. it's, it's working. Yeah, something's got to be broken here. We got to have a broken wire somewhere with this. Okay, even though the capacitors are bad, what's going on here is someone removed these screws out of here and I put one of them back. I used one of the ones that was holding the circuit board down. But then one of the leads that comes out of the tuning capacitor was broken off from the bottom of the board and that's what this, you see this resistor here, I just bent it over and kind of stuck it in there temporarily just to confirm. Yeah, I need to do microsurgery and and not right now. But he, so we summarize this one. It's got weak capacitors plus uh, broken wire and missing screws. The Lloyd's uh, appears to probably have bad capacitors and maybe a bad transistor. And the Transoceanic works, except the volume's a little bit low. So there you go. More to come later.